Good morning, radio listeners. You are listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. I'm Kenny Horn. And I'm Kyle Pepitone. And you're now tuned in to the Morning Buzz. Well, kinda. Every Friday during the summer, we're going to give you a compilation show of the Morning Buzz over the course of the last week. We have it all. Everything from the pressing news stories all the way to the weird and funny news that we're sure to give you a good laugh. We will even replay interviews that aired so you have another chance to listen in. We'll even be posting this show to YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. So go ahead and treat yourself. Sit back, relax, and grab that extra donut and listen to the best of the morning buzz. Mmm, donuts. My name is Amandaji, and I'm here with Sabrina Isaac. And we would like to ask you several questions. Um, first, we wanted to ask, what's your role in organizing the Richfield Park Fourth of July Parade? All right. Well, um, since 1999, so this is my 23rd parade, uh, I volunteer my time for my community to organize, plan, supervise, and stage uh, the best parade in New Jersey, if not in the country. Um, My title is Civic Parade Chairman, but I'm uh, one member of uh, about two dozen people in the community who do the same, who who volunteer their time to uh, help us celebrate our nation's independence. Um, It's a tradition going back since 1894, We've done this consecutively year by year by year. So we lay claim to being the longest running parade in New Jersey, the longest running 4th of July celebration in New Jersey. And we're up in the top five in the nation. So it's something our community takes a a lot of pride in. Wow, that's so exciting, especially because it's been going on for so long and you are one of the founders of this, am I correct? Well, yeah, I'm I'm carrying on from what my predecessors did. I certainly wasn't around in 1894. (laughs) Oh my gosh, wait. This is 127 years, not just 27. (laughs) I think I misheard what the the year you said. I thought you said, okay, never mind. (laughs) Okay, that's okay. Um, I grew up in town. I grew up in Richfield Park. Uh, a couple of blocks from Main Street. And as a little boy, I I distinctly remember sitting on the curb on Main Street and watching this wonderful parade come by. The fire trucks, the police department, the high school band, the school floats, the circus uh, clowns, the antique cars, the marching bands. And it was just such a thrill to have such a party out in the summer with all my friends and family, it, when, when it came time for me to think about what I can do for the community, I wanted to make sure the kids nowadays have the same kind of memories that I do, the same fond memories of, of just feeling a part of not only Richfield Park, but uh, of the country and, and of the world. It's a community event. And um, like I said, we volunteer our time We meet mm, just about, well, I start planning the next parade the day after this parade. So it's, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. I I enjoy it. You know, it's my way of giving back to Richfield Park that has been so good to me, that has not only given me a good education, but uh, have kept the, the streets safe. And it's, it's a debt of gratitude I owe to my parents for raising me here uh, in such a wonderful small town America. You know, we're, we're so close to the big bad city, New York. Uh, we're, about, uh, we're about five miles west of the George Washington Bridge, but um, we're not exactly Mayberry RFD, but it's small town enough where I always think about the old fashioned Saturday evening post uh, covers that Norman Rockwell painted of small town America. You can still go into the barber shop and just sit around and talk. You can run a tab at the local hardware store and, and get to know people on a first name basis. That's important. And it's something that uh, I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. I love that. That's really nice. I was going to ask, because, you know, the pandemic 
had been happening, were you planning then for a, a good year and a half? Because I know last year, a lot of things got canceled. Oh, we went on. We did not interrupt <laughs> last year it was an abbreviated version uh we uh, decided to put on a parade uh dedicated to our frontline workers that live in the village healthcare and first responders and the people in uh, necessary businesses uh, the essential businesses that stayed open and as well as our emergency service workers we had everybody in vehicles uh, we actually extended the parade route last year so people would be able to have social distancing. Um, so we did not interrupt our streak. We went on. And this year, since uh, June 4th, Governor Murphy had kind of given us carte blanche to open things up. The mask mandate has been lifted. So it's an option for people if they want to wear a mask or not. And there are no restrictions on uh, public gatherings as far as the number of people. So we're going full bore. And I think we're going to have a bigger and better parade this year than we've ever had. That is fantastic. I'm so happy to hear that you guys pushed through and it still went on despite everything that was going on. That is absolutely, it blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It really does. All right. But what have been some of your greatest challenges when it comes every year to organizing the parade? Oh gosh, let's see. Um, I know every year it gets a little bit easier because I can try and anticipate things that come up. Um, I mean, except for last year though, but. <laughs> well, last year was, we had to scramble a little bit more than usual, but we still pulled, pulled through. You did. You did. Um, my my challenges, I don't know. Uh, I've been doing this, like I said, 23 years running now. And um, I've, I've established a relationship not only with the um, uh, village leaders uh, politically and uh, the police department, the fire department, the ambulance corps, the rescue squad, uh, most of the civic organizations in town, as well as we have out-of-towners come by uh, to provide us with a little extra oomph on the parade. I'm talking about marching bands and clowns and jugglers and, and, uh, and different veterans groups. I, I've come to get the relationship going and year by year, I don't even have to reach out to them. They wanna come to me and say, we're going again this year, aren't we? And I said, <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. So it's it's not much of a challenge each year. And uh, it's it's more of a, a responsibility that I take pretty seriously. Um, I think in order to keep Richfield Park the way it is, uh, this tradition has to go on because uh, it's it's just, as I said, it's it's a highlight that I remember as a child. And maybe, just maybe, there's a kid sitting on the curb on Main Street that would want to want this position when I uh, decide to hang up my Uncle Sam hat, so to speak. <laughs> Do would you happen to say that that's part of your favorite experience in terms of um, meeting, I mean, connecting with more and more people of your community to create something everlasting? I, I think it gives me a, a thrill. It gives me a, a great thrill. I mean, went to school here. I was in the Boy Scouts here. I, I, I was, you know, uh, worked on the hardware store on Main Street as a teenager. And I played midget football here. And, and it, it's, it's a sense of community that I think a lot of people don't have that um, for whatever reason, they don't connect with the community. They don't have that uh, sense of village pride that is so evident here in Richfield Park. If you've never been to Richfield Park on the 4th of July, I would strongly recommend it. We have activities ranging from seven o'clock in the morning until after 10 o'clock at night. Uh, we start the day seven o'clock uh, a.m with uh, the Boy Scouts help raise their, our official flag. And uh, we have the singing of the national anthem. And uh, that's followed at eight o'clock where all the fire companies in town, there are six fire uh, companies, they have an annual inspection from out of town uh, judges. 
um, just with their equipment, their uniforms, and making sure everything is in working order. Uh, that's followed at nine o'clock by a baby and youth parade for the youngsters, uh, where they we have decorated carriages, and strollers, bicycles, and little floats, just a parade for the little ones to get them involved. The honor students are prominently featured in our uh, from all our elementary and high school. Um, and after that, at nine o'clock, let's see what happens. Oh, yes, we have a civic parade at 1130. We start that off. It's about a, a little bit over a mile route, uh, wending its way through town, which is patriotically de uh, decorated from stem to stern, red, white, and blue, stars and stripes everywhere you turn. Um, there's usually maybe 2,000 people within the parade. And we get a good crowd about, I'd say anywhere from 10 to 15,000 people watching the parade. So it, it's really an exciting day for us. Mm -hmm. And after that, the afternoon is dedicated to family. We have, uh, you can just smell the barbecue anywhere you walk in town. People are in the backyards having a little fun and going swimming and out of town people you haven't seen for years come by every year to enjoy it. I see my scout master from when I was a kid every year. How cool is that? How cool. <laughs> I see my football and baseball coaches every year they come back. And this year the Rotary Club is sponsoring a fireworks display at 930 in the evening uh, down at Veterans Park. That's on the um, east end of town, uh, free admission, a free fireworks display is nothing to sneeze at. It's a thrill. And that's how we wind up our day in Ridgefield Park. I love that. What do you think has been your best memory over the past few years? Oh, gosh. Year one. You know, I, <laughs> I, th I think my best memory just gets topped every year. I get the most thrill out of seeing, as seeing kids having a good time, you know, uh, seeing them jumping and dancing to the music and just running up and giving the clown a hug or meeting the mayor, their eyes get this big. And it's, it, it's a thrill to me. Again, it, it, it harkens back to my memories of town, of, of, of what, what makes Richfield Park, Richfield Park? I think it's the only place to be on the 4th of July. <laughs> I love that. How exactly do you say you deal with, um, or you cope with managing the people and the many tasks one goes through to have a successful parade? And on top of that, are there years that you perform more than others? that you think are the best each year does it become better like that that's a great question um i i don't know if that's putting me on the spot or not um i as as the chairman i try to improve year by year i try to bring a little bit more variety into um into the parade every year uh so i do definitely try and make it better for for everyone um i try to be all inclusive um i try to uh, make sure that anybody that asks if they can be in the parade absolutely you're in the parade santa claus is coming this year <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> neat <I> have to go. <laughs> christmas in july yeah yeah we, uh this year i have a new uh a new group coming by. It's an all-female uh, drumline from uh, Queens, New York. They're called Fogo Azul, um, New York City. It's a bateria. It's a drumline, a Brazilian drumline. There's about 50 or 75 members that don't promise to come by. So they're going to give us a little extra, a little extra pizzazz. So I'm excited about that. Now, going back to when I was a child, I do remember uh, 1976 being extra special because it was the bicentennial. Um, there was a lot of different things going on throughout the country, but in Richfield Park, that was my home. That was where I was going to be. Um, another big year, I think, 
was in, oh gosh, uh, 1984. Uh, that was 300 years since the town was founded. So it was our tercentennial. And uh, I remember we had a blast. We just had a blast. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I just can't help my cheeks hurt so much because I smile whenever I talk about Independence Day in the 4th of July. <laughs> and just to clarify, so when is the parade? I know you said the 4th of July, I'm assuming, right? Actually, uh, I say the 4th of July, but the parade is on the 5th this year. Okay. Uh, Day, July the 5th, that's 2021, uh, because, well, that's the federal holiday. And that goes back again. We're, we're about tradition in Richfield Park. Um, it's always been when the 4th falls on a Sunday, we celebrate it on the 5th. Kind of, um, we leave Sunday to God. And then we have a parade on Monday. And it starts, you said, at 7 a.m. and ends at 10 p.m., right? Uh, all the village activities. Yes, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful day. If you'd like more information, you can check out www.ridgefieldpark.org. Or one word, R-I-D-G-E-F-I-E-L-D-P-A-R-K.org. Well, it sounds like a very exciting night, that's for sure. I'm like, I need to put it in my like bucket list of things I need to do within my time here because that sounds like a fantastic parade. You're more than welcome to come by and, and, and tell your friends, tell your family, this is the place to be. I will. It's on, our, it, on the signs coming in and out of town where it says, welcome to Richfield Park. A few years back, we had a little addendum put onto that sign. And it says, the only place to be on the 4th of July. And that's up year round. So people are reminded. <laughs> well, it has been awesome getting to know you. And also, thank you for including us and letting us know about what your community does for the 4th of July. Um, All right. So this year, New Jersey may be having a bad year with mosquitoes. Bug experts say that depending on where you live and the rain and other factors and how much muck might like accumulate in the stream beds and how much water and dirt is sitting in your gutters, bird baths, flower pots, you know, flower pots, saucers, and other common items outside your house. Uh, many mosquitoes that are prevalent in New Jersey in warm and wet conditions, while others favor cooler temperatures and long and dry spells in between big rainstorms. According to weekly reports filed by country mosquito control agencies, this mosquito was, uh, was found in huge numbers in early May in several parts of New Jersey, um, particularly the Delaware River Basin, the, the Delaware Bayshore region, and the Pinelands. And according to Scott Cranes, with all the factors changing frequently, it is tough to predict whether this summer is going to be a good summer with mosquitoes or a bad summer with mosquitoes. Uh, the amount of mosquitoes in New Jersey uh, may have this summer uh, depends on how much rain we does, It doesn't depend on, on how much rain we get. It depends on the timing of the rain and when we get this rain. So I guess if it if the rain comes at like a time where it's like super super warm like right. as of tomorrow it's going to be like 98 degrees i'm sure that's going to be like if it were to rain it'd be a very bad day with mosquitoes right i mean even later in the week it's supposed to be rainy and then the temperatures i'm looking at the weather app right now at least well this is from an alpine so i don't know i'm going to switch it to montclair but I assume it's going to be roughly the same. Yeah. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's all a chance of rain. And then the temperatures are 90, 79, 72, 73. So that doesn't sound good. Like the more 70s seem fine. It's the, that's not too warm, but rainy and 90, according to Petrina, what you said, that sounds like oh, a big, oh, yeah. big mosquito po possibility. And uh, just, I, no, I can't. I yeah. hate it. Mm -mm. I, I, I'm a big fan of summer, but when it comes to mosquitoes, I'm like, oh no, because my backyard, I have like a creek. And so that's uh -oh. all the mosquitoes. That's like a mosquito, like, like homeland, you know what I mean? And so it's yeah. like, ugh, it's horrible. And 
I, I'm just hoping that it's it'll lighten up a little. I know in my town, at least, I live in uh, West Caldwell. They have um, they had some like that those helicopters come around and like spray the area for mosquitoes. Oh, interesting. But yeah, but the, it didn't really help, honestly. And oh, <laughs> I, I I know, and like other people were complaining about it, and so it's yeah. like, ugh. I hope there's like another way to fix it, but right. it's just eh. And not to mention. This comes after, of course, the cicadas and the ticks and the spotted lantern flies. And as somebody like me who just doesn't like bugs in general, not really my thing. This is why I prefer like fallish winter time when A, the temperature is more moderate and there are less bugs out and inside because bugs for some reason love to get into the house. And I don't get why, but I digress. This isn't fun. I, I don't know exactly how bad the mosquito problem is in my town of Manalapan, but uh, yeah, they're just not, f- any mosquito is not fun to have around. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, I know like when I'm, I'm going outside, especially at nighttime when it's warm and humid, that's mm. when I'll get all bit up. Otherwise, like, you know, throughout the day, I'll get bit here and there. And it's like, ugh, here we go. And it's just, mm. I know right now I have a few mosquito bites. It's like, eh. But, um, yeah, I think a lot of dampness that we've, I mean, I personally, I think it's been raining more than usual. It's definitely been very rainy this last month. I I will say that. And the temperatures have been fluctuating all over the place. It's been like 91 weekend, 60 the next. It's crazy. I like, I get like, we're not, I get summer doesn't technically start till the 21st and all, but still, usually the weather's getting progressively warmer. It's not bouncing up and down like a roller coaster. Right. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's never so like all over the place when it comes right. to the weather in summer. Like, yeah, there's going to be the rainy days, but like sometimes I'll check the weather app and it's like, it's like rain for four days in a row. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Yeah, exactly. Later this week, four days of yeah. possibly consecutive rain. Campbell, what are your thoughts on mosquitoes? Well, as personal experience, the worst mosquito bites to get are on your hand. And you would constantly have to see that lump and scratch it, and then mm, it goes red, yeah. or or you would just feel probably in the back of your leg, and that's also the worst ones again. But also, I mean, the other day the it was so hot out, so humid. Uh, I'm I interned for the jackals here on cam- on campus. Oh, okay. So, and it was just dark clouds, and then the rain was pouring in. Literally for like good solid five minutes and then stopped and started raining again. It was just so humid and like it was so gloomy and humid. It it was just bad weather and unfortunately right. we're gonna get bad weather up in Montclair. I think it's gonna be ninety on Tuesday. Yeah, ninety seven or something. Bad. It's it's like and then all these like little critters. I know Kyle, you're not a fan of it, but it's uh they're they're gonna probably no. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean it's 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 stressful. I mean like the weather it's going up and down. And of course it's New Jersey. Yeah. yeah exactly. Very unpredictable. So right. Oh, yeah. We can have rain, we can have snow, we can have sleet, we can have cold cold days, hot days, very scorching hot days. So yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's the perk of the state that we live in. <laughs> that is true. Oh yeah. I, I mean I yeah, go ahead, Petrina. Oh, no, I I was just going to say that, like, I just I feel like it's been mostly rain rather than like um, any like coldness or whatever. I mean, there was a few cold days here and there, but I just I I really like summer, but not when it comes to all these mosquitoes. and stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. But I, for one, I wish everybody luck this summer with the mosquitoes and stuff. I, for one, will be wearing jeans and a jacket. You can't see, but they're my jeans. I'm wearing jeans and a long sleeve jacket all summer long to prevent from mosquito bites specifically. I mean, that's one of the reasons I do this, but not not the main reason. Kyle, can we ask what the main reason is? <laughs> um, I just like it. 
I like, I, I, it's weird. I don't get affected by heat too much. And I, we're going to go way off topic with this one, but heat doesn't affect me too much. Like I can like feel it. Like I can feel the heat on me, but I, I'm never like uncomfortable by like hot temperatures. In fact, I'm more uncomfortable in hot temperatures when like I'm not covered by something. So like if I'm wearing short sleeves, I'm more uncomfortable in the heat than if I'm wearing literally a denim, a black denim jacket. It's weird. I don't understand it, but it's just how it's always been. And yeah, it's just part of me. Wow. That's really interesting. I guess that's a, that's a new fact we all know about Kyle now. <laughs> I mean, when I, when I, in the cold, I used to wear uh, khaki shorts in the cold when it was like 20 degrees outside. Yeah. That's a kid. I mean, yeah, that's what yeah, I, I, I've it seen a lot bother, of people right? do that. But like, I've never seen anybody do the opposite. Like, like what I do wear long sleeves oh, yeah. in the summer. It's, yeah, it's weird how one of them is like, okay, yeah, that's, that's just school kids, school kids being school kids. And the other one, people look at me like I have two heads, but you know, if you like it, you like it. All right. So according to NJ.com and Issa from earlier, uh, New Jersey will no longer require students to wear masks at the beginning of the next academic year. Rather, each school district will decide if their students will or will not wear the mask in class on a school or district basis. However, Governor Murphy stressed that this decision relies heavily on the fact that there is no dramatic or heavily on the chance that there is no dramatic change or decline with COVID uh, in the next few months between now and the next academic year in September. Additional Additionally, schools are no longer allowed to offer remote learning sessions, meaning classes will be fully in person come September. Murphy stated, quote, after a school year where the majority of our students spend significant time learning remotely, the upcoming school year will see a return to normal. Officials have stated that masks will still be required on school buses, though, as it is part of mass transit. And Murphy has stated that it is not unlikely that these rules could change come September as the state nears the cold and flu season. And currently, New Jersey has reported 105 new cases of COVID and four deaths, and almost 5 million people have been fully vaccinated in the state. All right. Okay. Um, I feel like we're all going to have like our own mixed opinions on this whole situation. Once again, our opinions do not re reflect the opinions of the station. For me, I personally believe like if you are requiring your every student to get the vaccine and obviously they all get it, then I feel like it's perfectly fine to not require masks, in my opinion. However, if you're not requiring schools to get vaccinated, personally, I would believe that then I would encourage masks to at least be worn throughout the next school year. What do you guys think? Well, I have a question. Like, is this enacted now? Do, do I still have to wear this? Because I'm very unclear on the rules. I just found out, like, gloves weren't a thing since, like, Vinyl Thon. <laughs> and so I think honestly I think there's a lot of like miscommunication going on right now because so many new things are happening every single right. day like the numbers with the vaccine keep getting higher and like bro I, I honestly don't know Kyle I'm not 100% <laughs> sure we need to have an SMT meeting to discuss some of these rules <laughs> yeah. well here's my thing I say that because I remember when Murphy officially announced that you no longer have to wear a mask outside and it wasn't until a couple days later that Montclair announced you don't have to wear the mask outside. That's so true. that's why I'm still wary about wearing it inside because although Murphy has said it, I don't know if the school, this school Montclair is going off of their own uh, calendar per se. I mean, judging from the previous research that I have just made, just uh, following Murphy on like releasing all these things and uh, these new guidelines, uh, I am aware that when they do announce that like, oh, masks will have to be worn here or here, they often say that it's up to the institution, the school, right. the location or the store to also determine that because um, I remember even when masks were no longer required in certain stores, I know it's... Um, I was often informed like before coming in that like some places still wanted to wear masks. So I feel it's very individual and it's always good to ask, but just in case if you don't know, it's good to be safe. You don't want to argue. You don't want to like miscommunicate with someone. There are still people who are scared. So I just, I just go with that. I respect that. Yeah. That, that's what I do. I'll always walk into like a store like target or something 
uh, mask ready and stuff. And I'll just do a quick look around when I walk in, see if anyone's not wearing it. And then to know if the coast is clear or not. Yeah, no, I feel like a lot of places really aren't being that clear. Like some places don't have a sign or anything. So it's like, oh, like, like I like the stories to say like, oh, like, you, masks are optional if you are fully vaccinated. Like right. I like that, it's nice and clear. So right away I know, but as someone who's like door dashing and like going around from store to store, I find it to be very unclear. Some places are not putting any signs out, some places are. And then it's like, obviously you don't wanna disrespect what the store wants, but like, if you don't know, you don't know. So if I see no sign, I kind of assume, okay, you're following Murphy's point of view and just, you know- Murphy, CDC, yeah, all that. Yeah, so it's a little confusing and perplexing, honestly. Right. But this is um, overall good news. I mean, I like to see that the cases are going down. The deaths are continuing to go down as well. More people are being vaccinated. So I feel like New Jersey is going strong right now, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with what you were saying before, how like, because we've seen in the past few months, we've seen like a lot of schools, uh, most a lot of colleges too, uh, say like, hey, students are required to get the vaccine or students are uh, students have the option to get the vaccine uh, before the next academic year. And uh, Montclair being on the side of it being required, I would think um, if they're requiring that, there's no reason to require the mask. They can encourage it because even uh, in the New Jersey dot com article, NJ dot com article, uh, it said people who feel safer wearing masks can do so because, you know, why would they disallow that? But I think for schools like Rutgers and Montclair that said, hey, if you want to come back next year, you have to be vaccinated. It just makes no sense to require the mask because if the vaccine does work, then why would you need the mask? That, yeah, that's I, my reasoning. The only thing I feel like the CDC is a little uncertain of is with the vaccine, can you still transmit COVID? That's the only thing that they're still, I believe, a little wishy-washy about. Right. Um, that the tests aren't set in stone with yet. So that's the only reason why I would say, like, if they did still require us to wear masks, that's what I would believe it would be for. But yeah, Montclair has not released whether or not they're still requiring it. And, you know, we got to remember, like, yes, like we have a bunch of students who live on campus, but there are still so many commuters. I mean, I'll be commuting next year, but like, thankfully, everyone in my family has been vaccinated. So like, I don't have to worry about that. But there probably are still many families with or students who live with their families and maybe elderly parent grandparents who might not be vaccinated too. And it's like, you wouldn't want to by accident, like transmit it, even if you are vaccinated. Cause like, that's something that we don't know as a fact yet. That is true. And even uh, not just with the elderly people, but like um, the, the immunocompromised, you, you re we really have to protect them because recent studies have shown like uh, in people whose immune systems are uh, less than ideal, uh, uh, for example, those with HIV, um, it's shown that if they're infected with COVID, it can go through the steps of creating mutations of it. So uh, in this NPR article, uh, they it showed research from a bunch of different tests. And in one woman uh, who had HIV, but wasn't like taking medicine to like control it, when she got COVID, they said like it went through the steps of creating mutations and like all the variants we're starting to see. It just happened while she was infected with COVID in like the seven months it took her body to overcome it. So like the whole point of the research and this article is like, if we don't want more strands, we really need to protect the immunocompromised more than anything, which I think just the science side behind it that like, just one person can be infected with this disease and just start creating variants just like that is i'm not going to say amazing because that's not the right word but from a biological standpoint it's absurd no i would say yeah it's very strange how this virus just keeps like uh, mutating and just causing more dangers it's like as if we got over one hurdle 
but yet there's so many other things coming up with these like new studies that are being shown and um it's just strange because we don't know what to expect from it this isn't like um I would say this isn't something similar to what happened a few years ago with the swine flu, the bird flu, or different right. kinds of um, illnesses that's been out there. So it's important just like to be wary, to be aware of what's going on, and just to be cautious. Yeah, for sure. And like to not forget that we are still in a pandemic, even though it's getting better for us here in New Jersey. But I'm really curious to see what ends up happening for next school year. Because like, as you right. said, Kyle, they're... We're, at Montclair, we're required everyone to get the vaccine. There are a lot of other big universities in the United States. Like my best friend, she goes to Temple University and that's like over 40,000 students, but they're Whoa. not requiring everyone to get vaccinated. So oh, it's okay. like, it's like in that case, like, I don't know, like I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of outbreak or like a, you know, like you don't know what's going to happen, but at least I am happy with Montclair that they are requiring people to get vaccines. Right. My own personal opinion, I think that's for the best. And hopefully masks will be optional because it's crazy to think, though, too, like before the pandemic, people used to wear masks, like not a lot of people, but you would occasionally see people around campus wearing a mask. And like at the time we were like, or at least in my head, I was like, oh, like, why are they wearing a mask? You know, right. like, that's so weird. Like yep. not thinking badly of it, just like, like, oh, like I wonder, like curiosity. Yeah. You know, and then to think that like, this happened and then we were all wearing masks and now it's like weird for us not to be wearing a mask it's just so crazy how like within two years our complete perception of masks has right altered i would say yeah not only that but like our general beliefs and like what that our society holds as norms i would say now there's so many changes like at first if if you saw someone not wearing a mask in a store uh, there would be mass panic. Like I, I've seen this once. I witnessed that a lady once came into the store without a mask. She just completely forgot. And everyone was like, oh, put on your mask, put on your mask. It, like it has if seemed like if she stole something or if she took out a gun. I'm, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to like say it was that violent, but it was um, it was a terrifying scene, but she was just not wearing a mask. And now everyone's not wearing a mask. And it just seems that like these norms are constantly changing. And like once people panic, one, now everyone finds it normal. Earlier, like, people wanted every surface sanitized then everyone wanted a social distance like I feel in the end we all have to remember that it's just the game of working together because no matter what happens we're still here we're still around each other and hopefully we're all safe and we're all healthy just like we have to remember that we have to work together on this like some people maybe aren't as informed as others because not uh, everyone has, I would say, as much of an access to media or not everyone follows the media as accordingly. But it's just important to be aware and just to, yeah, help each other out with this, not to, like, in a way, demonize each other because, yeah, um, because it's a virus, people are scared of one another physically. Right. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. preach. That was great. So we got to work together as a team. We're all in this together as High School Musical once said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think in the last, what was it, like 16 months? So March to June, that's 12, April, May. Yeah, like 16-ish months, 15, 16 months. We've definitely gone from being scared of other people to uh, the best word I can think of right now is more wary of other people. Like we're not terrified to be next to somebody. I mean, just yesterday during that um, evening buzz, we had a workshop and we had like one, two, three, four, like five people in the studio, all just like um, not hanging out, but like being part of the show. And, you know, like me and Petrina were over Zoom, but Kenny and then a bunch of high schoolers or yeah, a bunch of high schoolers, incoming freshmen were here and they were like, we were doing what we're doing now with lighter stories. And, and Kenny's over here like, hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think on all three guest mics? And so that would not have been allowed a year ago mm-hmm. that you would be crazy to even suggest something like that. In fact, we barely had any live content a year ago when this first hit. And now come September, uh, me and my uh, head producer, Kenny, are Kenny Horn are looking to get back into the way the morning buzz was pre pandemic, all in person and two hours long instead of one. And, you know, we're working on a plan for that, but we, we got to, first of all, we're both knew the position. Neither of us have been in charge of the buzz before the pandemic. We both 
join these positions during the pandemic time. And so not only do we have to, you know, like plan everything out, we have to also uh, know the difference between a Zoom call and having people in person, because I can see both of you right now. There's like six monitors here. I can barely see the chairs in front of me. <laughs> I was going to say, you you tell me about that, Kyle, transitioning from going to Zoom in person, because like, as for those of you who don't know, I'm the WMSC's office manager, and I'm going on my fourth semester of being on the student management team, and I first started my position in March of 2020. So I literally have spent the entire pandemic in this position and only during the pandemic. So I haven't even been in person and like I'm in charge of like planning events and stuff and fundraisers and I haven't had the opportunity to learn how to do this in person, which is kind of yeah. like, like that's a, like a lot of work. Cause at least like for me, like I board opt, I was part of the radio station before the pandemic started. So I was board trained and all that, but doing this other stuff and just like ah, it's just it's stressful it's it really is like it's definitely great that we're going back to being in person but a lot of stress comes along with that and especially because you were taught like this foreign language the zoom language for so many months now yeah. how do i transition out of that and like part of me is like i still want to implement like some zoom things now because i've learned all these great skills through zoom and how efficient and effective it can be so might as well like keep it going a little bit, but then add some in person back in right. and have a little zoom and like a little mix of both. Cause might as well. Now, really, we have this whole new platform, but now we have time for one quick, uh, story, uh, throwing it to the wonderful land of Walmart, where an employee tackles a deer inside the store, uh, which is already wild enough. And we were just talking about deer. So a video captured by a witness at a Walmart store in Baraboo shows an employee pinning the deer <laughs> to the floor after tackling the wild animal inside the store. Witnesses said the other employees opened the back doors of the store and were able to guide the deer back outside. And the animal did not appear to be injured and was last seen running away from the store. Oh, that's ironic. That's very ironic, yeah. actually. No, you know this is why this is why it's ironic. You know, you know a barboo is no Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, that makes sense. You know, you know, you know, Sweet Place Wisconsin, the Milwaukee yeah. Bucks, the whole thing, Fear the Deer. Well, the dude, fear the deer. The deer. Yeah, the dude, that, that, you go. That, that, so, that's a, that is very scary stuff, uh, which is also uh, confusing too, because I feel like I've seen a lot of different videos of Walmart employees having to stop deer from entering their store. Like, this is not the first time I've heard this headline or seen the video. Uh, and there's this one time where the deer that came in was just, like, bolting through, like, barricades pretty much. So it was, like, tackling shelves, dropping things everywhere. And it looked like it it probably definitely hurt itself, at least a concussion, I would think, after, like, banging its head on a bunch of steel crates and all this stuff. Yeah, I've seen that video before, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, here's the you you see some some wild stuff at Walmart. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, it, it it's like every time I go to Walmart, I always hear a bird, and that mm -hmm. that's that's like that's you know that's that's normal to me. That's normal. That's <clears throat> I work at a Walmart, so that's that's average. You see a lot that's of a, crazy stuff at Walmart. There's a lot. Of, there's YouTube videos on people you know staying staying 24 hours at a Walmart, so that that exists. Uh, but you know, to see wild animals, you know, such as the deer, that's mm -hmm. you know that's that. That's not the Wednesday night at, at Walmart. That's kind of very confusing. It, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's crazy to say that you know Walmart, you know, ha is the uh, home of this uh, craziness. But you know, it's 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 fitting. Florida of department stores is definitely Walmart because anything can happen. In <clears throat> oh, thousand percent. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, if you want to talk about this pure chaos, not you don't ex you want. Some something new and exciting every day. Work at a Walmart. I can't yeah. vouch for this. I never worked at Walmart, but you know, I just oh, I, can, what I can vouch for it. I will say one of the I have one crazy Walmart story and then another just general retail story. Uh, so the Walmart story, not super crazy. I'll save it for another show. But 
we have like this section in the deli where you can grab like pre-sliced cut meat and all this stuff. So there's this guy and he, he pulls up there. And I'm like, okay, average customer. He's looking at the meats. Then he grabs one of the bags, opens it up, uh, takes two slices of like turkey. I think I want to say it was turkey. Yeah. And he just starts eating it. So I'm like, all right, you know, I've seen crazier, you know, people do that with grapes. They still buy the grapes, right? This guy puts the package of turkey back in there. And then just Dude, leaves, no doesn't even buy anything at all. He just leaves the store with nothing in his hand. And I'm just like, this cannot be real. <laughs> so then I have to go and find the package that he had left open. Uh, so I'm digging through and this guy was slick. He put it like underneath all the other turkey items, stacked a couple of cheeses on top of it as if nothing happened. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like you really <laughs> did all this for two slices of turkey. And it's, you can see the bite mark in the bag. And I'm like, this is gross. Oh. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? I'm like, how do I, how did I end up working here? Uh, That's the same energy as the people who were licking the ice cream a few years ago. Yes. On the show. Except he wasn't even recording it for anything. He did this pure hunger. He's like, I can't go anywhere unless I eat these two slices of turkey for no reason. Ugh. But then very quickly, uh, my other retail story is uh, I had just started working at Kohl's. It was Black Friday officially. Uh, so it was very busy. Oh and this man comes up to me. He's like, oh, excuse me. Um, I lost my wife. So could you help me find her? And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? You want me to help you find your wife in this store, this giant Kohl's store? And then me being me, I was like, well, I could either help out other customers or I can go on this goose hunt for this man's wife. Who I have no clue what, he, what she looks like. And this was the details. I was like, okay, so what does she look like? And then he's like, well, she's kind of short and she's a little darker skin. And I'm like, that did not help at all. You need to give me like a hair color. What is she wearing? I'm like, you just described, she's human pretty much. Uh, she's human and she breathes. So that's cool. So I go on this journey with this man. We're walking together pretty much. And we are searching for his wife for a good, probably 30 minutes or so at this point. And I'm sure I'm getting calls on like some kind of walkie talk and be like, we need you back in shoes as I am. Like, nah, I need to find this man's wife. Uh, make a long story short, did not end up finding this lady, this lady at all. I don't even know if he had a wife. Maybe he was just very bored and felt like hanging out uh, at a Kohl's on Black Friday because he had not enough details to actually have a wife. So he was, he was on the journey. He was on. He's like, he's like, yeah. You, you, he she tried to have you be the wingman to uh, you know mm -hmm. find him his uh, find him. He said find. I don't think he said find him his wife. I think he said find him a wife. A wife. Oh, could be because yeah, I don't think that's... English was his first language. Maybe he was. <laughs> I mean, he was trying to get me as his wingman. Okay, hey, man. That's hey. You gotta, I res yeah. I respect it now. Okay, I wish he was a little more clear, but I, he has a type. <laughs> he just wants a short, uh, darker skin person, and that's it. Uh, and that's it. Welcome back to. The evening buzz, not the morning buzz. We are joined here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. I mentioned before we went to break that we have three very, 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 I can keep on saying very for the next two hours that we are here. Very special guests joining us right now. We're joined by, if you want, they can say their own names. So first one, I was just about to say your own name to introduce you. All of you all the way on to my right. I'm you, Colin Berg. You're Colin Berg? Berg. Berg. That's a cool last name. Tell us about yourself. What you are a high schooler, right? Going to be? I'm going to be a freshman at Montclair freshman State. Montclair yeah, State. and I'm studying TV and digital media. So I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to oppor new opportunities and what's coming up. Okay. The lady next to you. Um. Hi. My name's Emily Vaca. I'm a senior, and um. Honestly, I just really love law that's like been my thing but i also have a passion for journalism so i really wanted to go to this program to like open up and see what else is there law interesting <laughs> okay remind me not to do anything bad in front of you <laughs> and the last person that we have yeah hi uh, i'm sammy and i'm also an incoming freshman and uh, i'm currently undeclared in school of communication media so i don't know exactly what i want to do yet but uh all i can say is i do like film you know and uh yeah there's no problem with being undecided. I I was a math major at Rutgers before I was here. So <laughs> yeah, if no. anybody did a 180, it was me. Yeah, no. So I'm very happy to have you all here. Kyle, Kyle Pepitone is my assistant producer for this show. And he's going to introduce the next story for us. Kyle, take it away. Kyle, I can't hear you. Kyle, That's my gone. bad. 
All right, there we left off here. A, we're talking about the Venus one, right, Kenny? Yes, that's the one. All right. So, a study nullifies the life in the clouds of Venus theory, but maybe there might be some life on Jupiter. Recently, U.S. and European scientists stated that there isn't there is insufficient water vapor in the clouds of Venus to support any kind of life as we know it. The water in the clouds is a hundred times too low to support any kind of Earth-like life. John Howlsworth, a microbiologist at Queen's University Belfast in Northern Ireland, and his team looked at the most dry and acid-tolerant species on Earth and said, quote, they wouldn't stand a chance on Venus, end quote. However, in nullifying the theory of life on Venus, scientists have found that Jupiter has the right amount of water and atmospheric temperatures to support any kind of life. However, Howsworth has stated and stressed that this does not confirm that there's any life, but opens up possibilities. Sarah Sager, an astrophysicist at MIT, said, quote, we're not trying to push, push Venus as a definitely habitable world. So far, all conventional interpretations say Venus is uninhabitable, end quote. Based on research, if there is life on Venus of any kind, it is not of any kind that we know. So... Every day we get closer and closer to the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Maybe not from Venus, but now the possibility of Jupiter is open. Now, now hold on, wait a minute. So remember this morning, Kyle, we were talking about how, what was it, Jeff Bezos? People want to keep to Jeff, Jeff Bezos in space, yes. I mentioned, I mentioned how like, oh, maybe, maybe this is a good thing because we because what was it because there might be other life right. on other planets how funny is that now there that there may be some some life on venus and jupiter maybe maybe the money put in was worth it that one what was hey. it one trillion dollars who knows yeah who now knows? extraterrestrial beings can get next day delivery yes they can <laughs> we have emily emily wants to say something about this real quick emily what are i your mean thoughts? I personally believe that there could be life on like other planets like and who knows like maybe one day we can go to Venus make some new Venus friends over there and just have fun yeah on like clouds there you know just play rock volleyball I think, yeah. I think with the amount of uh, with the amount of new life and uh, things we've we've noticed over the past few years I mean who knows there could be I mean like a lot of people have thought there have been for over so many years now who knows Right. Could be. Rock volleyball yeah. party. Rock volleyball yeah, party. I've exactly. Got, I've got my own theory about aliens, and I I say this 100% seriously. All right? Don't laugh at me, any of you three. I am older than <laughs> you. I have superiority <laughs> in, in, in no way at all. Um, so say what you want, but aliens, I, I believe they exist, but I don't think they're like the green, like big-headed Martians or whatever. I think they're probably flying toasters or something weird. <laughs> <laughs> they are definitely. Could be. So, What's up? I agree. So, aliens are not the, uh, I'm, for lack of a better term, odd-looking green aliens, but they look like something we have here on Earth. That's your theory? <laughs> That's the weirdest thing I could think. Okay, the weirdest I thing I could so. think of, Kyle, is a flying toaster. There was I mean, okay. that, that, that's, all we, that's, all we have, that's all we have from our imagination. So, right. you know, we never know. Thank so, you, I like... But know, what about, like, instead of it being, like, a toaster with wings, it could be, like... Other life forms like us? Yeah, <laughs> that, or it could be, like, I don't know, a house with, like, cockroach legs just <laughs> crawling around? Uh, no, no, you're done. <laughs> okay, no, you're done. done. Nope. I, I can pass on that one. <laughs> nope. Do you, okay, do you, I need to, I want to ask around now. So, Emily, you said you think aliens can exist. Colin, Sammy, Petrina, I don't remember if yeah. you said anything, Petrina. What do you all think? I think they could. I mean, you know, they definitely, we've definitely had enough, you know, research and people are going up in the space to try to figure these things out. I don't think that, you know, the space, National Space Station and stuff would invest in money if they didn't feel like there was something that we could find here. Yeah, I mean, right. this is such a big universe. 100%. 100% are real. There's First gotta of all, be one other thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah they should the be. Yeah, but maybe not how the movies show it, but definitely. No, yeah. 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 Exactly. See, Sam, Sammy thing. and I are in the same page. <laughs> <laughs> he believes in flying toasters just like I do. Exactly. 100%. <laughs> That's right. You can put the toast in and come, call, come all the way back to you. It's, it's mobile. 
It's kind of like a portable charger. Just what about my cockroach house? They could like no. you can just start moving around <laughs> easily. No, no. I'm not <laughs> saying aliens aren't real. I'm just saying nobody has actually officially invaded Area 51 yet. I just agree. saying. <laughs> oh, yep. Kyle, don't give anybody that we don't know of. Not again. Yeah. How many people showed up there? Like that, actually, in my, that in we room. don't know of, Kyle. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I think a few. But this is actually yeah. interesting because there was just, I believe it was this past Friday, there was something leaked about, not aliens, obviously, but about UFOs and yeah. things that yes. are out mm-hmm. there. I've been seeing it allegedly. on TikTok. Oh, <laughs> yeah, me too. Talk about it. Talk about it. I don't know TikTok as well as you do. So, yeah. So, listen, there's there's been, like, um, I, there's this one account that keeps talking about, like, how the government's finding UFOs and stuff like that and how there was, like, a sighting of some sort of alien. I'm not saying it's real. I'm just saying I... I don't know. I, I, I don't doubt it, but I don't like 100% think it's real. But I could go on about space for like hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I yeah. think aliens sound like? <laughs> that sounds yeah. about accurate. Isn't that Thank from the you, wild thornberries? <laughs> is that what that's from? Yeah. Yes. It's I a little think. brother. Is that what that is? I've never <laughs> seen the show, but I do know that. Well, there's we have a bunch of sound effects here. If one of you wants to get up, one of your high scores wants to come up and come around on this side and look at it, feel free. But we have a bunch of sound effects and different things that we could play over the air. And one of them, it's called, and I didn't find this out until recently, it's called Yagaboo Dibbity Ba Yadu. And then it starts cutting off because the title is too long. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. I feel bad for whoever has to phonetically type that out. <laughs> Dude, I guarantee it was Josh. Josh, our former station manager for U3. That's fair. Yeah, it probably yeah. was him. I guarantee yeah. it. But yeah, Rep- so like al- aliens and UFOs are like possible things now. And you know, that just, well, first of all, my, fir- the, my first known encounter with an alien, and I use air quotes heavily here, was a picture of one in Gunness Book of World Records what? many, many oh. moons ago. And it terrified me <laughs> i don't know if you said many moons on purpose because that's kind of like um, planetary, yeah, i guess i just didn't want to say yeah. years ago i needed something more interesting than years ago yeah 